son of Joseph, who earned his living as a carpenter and passed that trade on to Jesus. So we presume that Jesus, from about the time he was 12 until about the time he was 30 and began his public ministry, exercised the trade of carpentry. Well, the legend states that during these years, Jesus the carpenter became an expert at making yokes. Yokes, you remember, are the fitted beam that rests on the shoulders of a team of oxen so that they can pull a heavy load together. So the legend claims that Jesus became particularly good at making yokes. So people would come from miles around for a handcrafted yoke by Jesus, the son of the carpenter. When people came to him with their oxen, Jesus would very carefully, deliberately measure the team, their size, their width. He would make sure that the space between them was perfect. After about a week, the family would return again with their team of oxen for a final fitting, and Jesus would carefully place the yoke on their shoulders, watching for rough edges, smoothing, sanding, shaping, until the yoke fit the oxen perfectly. We can imagine how important a perfect fit would be for a farming family or a working family. If the yoke harnessed the oxen too close, they would jostle one another. If it harnessed the oxen too widely, then they would not pull in tandem. A poor, painful fit would mean that the oxen would not pull for law. In light of this legend, I understand the words of Jesus in the Gospel today a little bit better. He says, take my yoke upon your shoulders. If you do that, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Actually, the Greek is a little bit different than the English translation. What Jesus actually says is, I will give you refreshment. I will give you respite. And so the suggestion is not that the labor will end, but that we will have refreshment in the midst of our labor. Why would Jesus say that? Because the yoke, most often, in Jesus' time, was a double yoke. The yoke that he worked on as carpenter was probably a double yoke. And so Jesus is saying, I want to share your burden with you. He's not adding additional weight, additional burden on us, but saying, take my yoke, take the double yoke upon your shoulders. If you do that, you will have respite. You will have refreshment because I will be pulling with you. He says, my yoke is easy. And actually, again, the Greek has a different suggestion to it. In Greek, the word actually means useful. My yoke is useful. My yoke is rightly made. My yoke is pleasant. And so the sense of Jesus' words is that the yoke is well fitting for the shoulders. And his words speak directly to the practice of the good carpenter shaping the yoke, smoothing its edges, sanding and fitting it for particular shoulders. And so the yoke that Jesus lays on us is well fitting, shaped for our particular lives, our particular hearts, our particular shoulders, tailor-made for us. And 
So the yoke may not be easy, but it's fit for us. So two things we learn today. That the yoke that Jesus asks us to shoulder is a double yoke, a shared yoke. And Jesus knows that it's not easy, but it fits for us. It fits our lives. If this Sunday is like most other Sundays, most of us come here today with some anxieties and worries about the future, about our relationships, about our children or our parents, about illness, about money, about challenges we are facing. Anxiety, worry, always gets us looking in the wrong direction. It gets us looking at the problem rather than at God who saves. If Jesus' words in our gospel today are not as consoling as we thought they are, we do know they ring true and are realistic and practical. The yoke we carry is shared with Jesus. The yoke we carry is not easy, but it is fit for us. When I hear this passage from Matthew's Gospel up to now, I have usually heard it as Jesus giving his cross to us, asking us to carry his cross like Simon of Cyrene. But that forgets an important truth, that the cross Jesus bore, the cross Jesus carried, really was not his. He was an innocent man. The cross that Jesus carried was ours. And in the end, he bore that yoke all along. The yoke he invites us to take today, that he calls his, really, already, is ours. It belongs to us. And he's asking us today to share it with him. We know that when we receive the Eucharist, Jesus gives us his whole self, body and soul, blood, divinity, his whole self. But today, I want us to think about Jesus in the Eucharist, sharing with us, specifically, his shoulders. Today, Jesus yokes himself to us beneath our burden. With his shoulder there, our souls find rest and our burden is lighter.